Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass in. Yeah. Banging yeah. chicks and drinking beer no, and smoking weed. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm married. Yeah, I'm married. Jake's, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> off panel, off chopping with Jake and Tyler. Do I have to fucking talk now? Yeah, dude. We're, yeah. we're podcasting. We're podcasting. We're podcasting away. We're Hope you enjoyed our Christmas uh, time podcast today. It's a, uh, we should do a Christmas episode, <laughs> but not today. You know what? We better do a holidays episode instead of a Christmas. I was thinking episode. that uh, for the Christmas episode or for the Thanksgiving episode, mm-hmm. should just be us. You know, like what properties we're thankful for. You know. Yeah, and here's the and, thing too. And uh, you know what, Tyler? I'll tell you right now. I'm thankful for you, buddy. Aw. And I'm thankful for you listening to this podcast Woo! off panel, off topic. <laughs> Number 21. Woo. But yeah, last week yeah. we did a double dip. We had our Eternals review, and then I did a half episode solo half episode. Ass. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> uh, talking about uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now we're back. Uh, if you haven't noticed already, our, our recording schedule has changed. So we're going to be recording on Sunday nights and posting on Mondays. So yes. that will be the new uh, approach to the yeah. show. Life happens, man. You know what? In a couple years when we're rich enough and famous enough this to be able- This is the biggest podcast in the world. For, for this to be our full-time job, it'll be we different. Sign, when then we, we'll make- the, yeah, yeah. When we sign that Joe Rogan Spotify <laughs> deal- with the, for the, yeah, no Apparently, way. we just need to have a couple people on and let them spew their bullshit yeah. without contradicting them. Right. That's what I've read. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I really liked you in news radio, buddy. Sorry that you became your character. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't acting at all on that show. Right? Maybe. But anyway, you were saying something before I uh, introduced the show, Tyler. Oh, uh, talking about holidays. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I make a joke, but um, honestly, like the reason why you know the reason why we say holidays is because I don't know what you celebrate. You know, so it's it's very, uh, it's a very human way of saying I appreciate you, and I hope you don't die in the next couple weeks. That's literally what you're saying. Pretty much. And when you get mad because somebody said, hey. I appreciate you, and I hope you don't die. It's kind of like, well, maybe you need. I mean, do you do you want to die? I don't know why you would want to. I hope you don't. Because when you say bless you when you sneeze, you're basically like, hey, I hope whatever happened just now doesn't kill you. Does it? Hope net. You know what I mean? Yeah. So take it as it is. <laughs> it's it's a it's a kind and it's a compassionate gesture from one human to another, and there's no reason to get all your panties in a bunch over it. Okay. Okay. Happy holidays. Happy or Merry Christmas if you know, that, you know. Right? I feel like Hanukkah is the most exhausting. Did you see that because uh, you gotta get Al Franken has every day. Uh, stopped the war on Han- Hanukkah because of Tucker Carlson? We can't get into that right now. <laughs> There's a the whole thing. We'll talk off the air. <laughs> That's more, because that was more um, tinfoil radio style. Yeah. Well, Tyler, we have stuff to talk about today. We do. See? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can't talk about that. Right some now. big announcements came out a few days ago. November 12th was Disney Plus Day, everybody. Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Now, can, oh before we get God, into it, I do, I do want to acknowledge that it is getting kind of silly at this point because why, <laughs> like a company like Disney, right, who used to do stuff like, and they still do, D23. This big convention talking about all their Disney properties. Oh, but this, that, I that, thought that was when the, all the world leaders got together and talked about it. <laughs> No, that's G7. Oh. <laughs> no, I thought that was the kind of plane well, that real let, rich people have. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest. Disney does run the world, so, I mean, it would make sense that you would think that the D23 is that, the G7. Fuck, keep putting out the content, and, uh, and I will totally overlook the, uh, you know. But that's what I'm saying. Like, we've gotten to this weird point now where companies... Don't use Comic Con and E3 and things like that because you know COVID yeah, and everything else, and yeah. and I don't know how expensive it it is to, uh, you know, buy a press conference for those those buy conventions or well, you know what I mean. They the have their your presentation. I'm pretty sure if Disney goes, hey, come on out, we got something to tell you that a whole shitload of people will be there going, what? But it's just funny to me that in a corporation, probably some with recording devices. It's not a holiday, but or a co- pens, but a corporation. Does their whole day thing, you know? Yeah. Because it's it, you know DC's done it with Batman. They have Batman Day and shit like that. Yeah. But it's I just no I just May the Fourth. Find it funny that these corporations who already created a bunch of holidays in general, like like uh, St. Patrick's Day and 
Valentine's Day and things like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, right. It's not enough that they do that. No, we have to make it Disney Plus Day because we we could show you everything at D twenty three. But the overlords of the world in nineteen fifty were like, how do we get people to keep fucking yeah. to produce a low uh, intellect? Well, uh, wh- labor force. When we po- Valentine's Day. <laughs> When we post this, uh, another comp- uh, Microsoft, the Xbox is doing their 20th, because an- this is the 20th anniversary of the first Xbox. Suck it, Microsoft. But my thing is that, that makes a little bit more sense. Oh, I'm mad about that. To me. It's like, but this <laughs> yeah. Disney Plus day is like, well, this is the second year well, of Disney this- Plus, and it's like... So? Okay, well, like Apple and uh, like Microsoft, for example, like they have their presentation days. Isn't like a stock? Yeah, yeah, stock they're pretty much like the Apple Holders event. Holders Day or something. They, Aren't they usually that? If it's not specifically an Xbox event, yeah, most of the time Microsoft is just like. Uh, and Apple does like product launches. Yeah. They all do it. It's and, just. And, but Apple's been doing that for. Apple right. started doing that way back when they launched but it's the, been, the iPhone. But this is the first time that entertainment companies have started making their own. Well, and the the pandemic Thanks. pushed that. So, like, DC Fandom was created in 2020 because of the pandemic, and I think they're going to just do that every year. But it, I just why think not? it's funny that Ain't Disney... Broke. But to me, it's like, why even have a Disney Plus day when, let's be honest, when we look at the announcements, this was a Marvel Plus day. Hey, you know what? Let me, can I just say one thing? Listen, if you have a bunch of first-look um, footage coming out, I want to be able to find it on fucking Disney Plus. I don't want to have to fucking go to goddamn YouTube and look up Moon and Knight try, and She Hulk and, and shit. navigate through fan made trailers. Yeah! Oh my fucking god, I hate fan made trailers. <laughs> Holy shit, I fucking hate them. Like the She Hulk one that it got a bunch of people. If yeah. I want, if I ran YouTube, I would literally have one person going. If you make a fan made trailer and try to make it like a real one, we're going to execute yeah. you. <laughs> Uh, before <laughs> whoa, oh, that uh, is a really, really I just want extreme to, reaction. I just want to clarify something. Yeah. Uh, th- we're strictly going to be talking about Marvel and uh, Star Wars related properties, and a little Good bit movies. about Fox properties, mostly because I there's a lot of Disney movies that are coming out that um, I don't really care about, and I don't really feel like it's worth talking. I have I have seen yeah. uh, that um, Home Sweet Home Alone. Um, is getting a very uh, it, people don't like it. It's a shitty movie. So I, no, ha- I have you, heard that. Hey, uh, you don't say. <laughs> um, I have heard that Shang Chi looks great. By the way, when I was a kid, okay, guys, uh, folks, when I was a kid, uh, folks. Disney new Disney movies were a were a novelty. Okay, now they would release the older ones from like the sixties, you know, thirties, forties. They put it like, in their vault. They'd put them right, and then they, you know, whatever. So they could overprice but, the the. But it was release. a novelty. Now they make like three or four like brand new animated movies a year, yeah. almost. Well, it's, it's like MCU level. I, again, I cut out a bunch of announcements. Again, I, I kind of focus more on the Marvel Star Wars stuff because that's the stuff right. I knew we'd really talk about. But there is a shit ton of movies coming down the pike. The know, reason on why Plus. the reason why I think it's cool. Okay, I just kind of explained to you why I think it's like what the what the fuck. But the reason why I think it's cool is because there are a lot of very specific niche pro- projects that may find a larger audience, but are good for representation of other cultures and uh, you know, like young kids who are like, you know, I don't see this on you know uh, that new one coming out about the house. It's I I don't know if it's a Pixar movie. But it's a Hispanic family, and they have a magic house, and they all have gifts. Okay. Yeah, I didn't watch it that It played one. before Eternals. Not my screening. Okay. Mm. Really? You it's got, called, a, you got a short before Eternals? No, it's not a short. It was a No, preview. I don't think I got that trailer, no. Hmm. That was weird. It's called Monko or something? I don't know. Uh, maybe I missed it, but I don't remember it. But here's the thing, is if it doesn't get a wide like audience, that's okay, because you know what? There are people out there who are going to love this movie. Because it speaks to their uh, culture and everything well, like that, and, and that's cool. Again, you're, you're seeing a lot of movies coming to Disney+. Plus. You're seeing a lot of movies go to HBO Max, too. So I think they're starting to see the validity of having right. um, movie, having made-for-TV movies, essentially, as, but made right. for streaming. Or but as a human being, the more you're exposed to other cultures that you're not used to, the more open-minded you become. Yeah. Because it is impossible not to be. And they had already done things like that with Coco and... and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Movies. Yeah, and I think that's really cool. So that's one of the reasons why I think it's cool, because there's always going to be something out there for any 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 number of little kids that are home just bored during the summer. Like, oh, yeah, so honestly, again, I think what they should do, 
Instead yeah. of doing Disney Plus Day, just have a Marvel Day and a fucking Star Wars Day. Wait, we already have that May the 4th. That's where you announce all the Star all right, Wars Let's day. get to the projects already. Why and, do then, you have- and then Marvel, you can pick a day and make it a Marvel let's, Day. Let's get to this. Because I'm sick of Disney Plus already. You do know that Willow no, is not a Star No, it Wars is not, but I did want to mention it. Uh, it's a Lucasfilm. It's film. a Lucasfilm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lucasfilms, Star well, Wars. Well, then maybe you put Lucasfilm at the top instead of Star Wars. I mean, I'm just, I'm yeah. not... Whatever. I don't write rundowns the, Willow for Willow is uh, <laughs> is going to actually be a seri- a sequel series <laughs> uh, to the movie. And Never cared for this movie. Warwick whatsoever. Davis will return as the as Willow, and yep. uh, he's joined by Ruby Cruz, Aaron Kellyman, Ellie ba- Bamber, Tony Revalori. I guess I don't know. I don't know these names. Amar Chada Patel and Dempsey Brick. You don't know those names. Um, I'm just kidding. Erin Kellyman uh, is... 2022 is when that's coming she out. Was, uh, she was in Falcon Winter Soldier, right? I don't know. Erin Kellyman. She's the Irish girl who's got the freckles and the red hair. Oh, she, she was, she's... Uh, she was also in Solo. She's the leader of the Flag Smashers. I think it's really cool because she has such a unique look, and she's getting a lot of roles, which I think is really cool. Uh, so I'm no, excited I, to I see just, her. Uh, stuff. I did want to mention that, that uh, yeah, Lucasfilms is... Making a sequel series on Disney Plus for Willow. I know, I, I know a lot of people like it. I've yeah. never fucking seen it. I don't know what I it is. I saw it when I was younger. My brother fucking loves it. And there are some serious cult members out there who are like, dude, Willow's like the best. What is it about? I don't even know what it is. I don't know. And I'm it's, usually pretty up on these things. <laughs> it, here's, here's what happened, okay? Star Wars fans are just, it's 1986 and, and we're starved for content. We got so books like, oh, and comic books. Lucasfilm has another original no, no, no. movie. George Lucas. Oh, right. Made, yeah, he yeah. wrote it. Yeah, 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 he wrote and directed it and stuff. Or no, Ron Howard directed it. Yes, he wrote it and Ron Howard directed it. But, but uh, Lu- Lucas wrote it and produced it and stuff, so it's basically Lucas's movie. But It's a Lucasfilm film. Exactly. <laughs> but, dude, that's what happened. Is like all of these Star Wars fans like yeah. migrated to this Willow thing, and I don't think it's that great. Hey, hot take. Yeah. Hot take. Yeah. Outside of Indiana Jones and Star Wars, George Lucas hasn't made a good movie. Have you ever seen American Graffiti? It's okay. And here's why... I don't hate it. It's okay. Here's why American Graffiti isn't a good movie to us, because none of us grew up in the fucking 50s, George. (laughs) And none of us... Yeah. Uh, no, and uh, in the uh, have you noticed the best Star Wars movies are the ones where he doesn't direct them? Yeah, the second two. Yeah, and... Oh, the best Star Wars movies are just the trilogy, because Disney fucked it. Did you notice that the sequel trilogy, the best movie out of the three of them, was the middle one, and it wasn't directed hey, by hey. that hack J.J. Abrams? Do you want to get yelled at on the internet? For what? Be a fan of The Last Jedi. People yell at you. I am a fan of The Last yeah. Jedi, and people can suck my balls. <laughs> so anyway, uh, for those of you who are huge Willow fans, I'm not disparaging it, because just because I don't really get it doesn't yeah. mean, you know, I'm not trying to... I, I, I don't want to disparage dude, nerd I am I am legit surprised. I have no idea what this is. Because, again, I'm pretty up on this. Like thing. I said, I saw it, but whatever. Any um, Hoosiers. More power to you, and I'm excited for you, but let's move on to the real stuff. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Awesome. Yes. Uh, so, so fucking good. They they sh- released some pictures, if I remember if I remember correctly, and I've seen some of it. It looks fucking awesome. It the, looks rad. The comparison is really funny, though, because like, how, much, how, how much healthier we are uh, these days or how long much longer our... our um, life expectancies are because, like, you see, like, here's a picture of Sir Alec Guinness at like 62 in yeah, the first Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, and then and then and then you see like, um, or you know, like you and McGregor's last appearance, and then 18 years later, it's it's, you know, you start looking at these different uh, ideas of what old age is. I, I, I'm pretty sure Ewan's up close to his 60s, isn't he? He's getting up there. Uh, I don't know. He, he's he, got to be in his in, 50s. Oh, okay. So I, I want to look this up. It is, and I, since this was announced, mm. the thing that excited me the most about Obi-Wan is, because honestly, when I heard about this being announced, I was like, I don't think we need to see this. Because I was like, we've already seen him in the prequels. Right, but it's we already know McGregor, where he. Man. We already know where he is when he meets Luke. And he is dreamy. Do I what? But what? But what I'm saying is, do we really need to sit through a whole series of Obi Wan from when he I, after the death of Padme? I'd rather have to that. Tatooine. Do we I'd, really need that I'd show? I'd rather have that than a fucking third season of The Mandalorian. What the fuck else is there to tell about his story? Honestly, we had the maybe. Big- maybe you should watch the show and find out, dude. <sighs> you fucker. <laughs> No, but Deborah. You make me feel like the stormtrooper De- Debra- hit 
Grogu over the head. Deborah Chow is uh, kind of the lead. I, I don't know if she's the showrunner, but I know she's directing a bunch of episodes. Um, she directed probably one of the best episodes in The Mandalorian, which was uh, episode three of the first season mm. when he breaks breaks out Grogu, when he goes in and kills all the stormtroopers, like how that was directed. That she was, directed that. That was the first one. First episode. No, I'm talking about, no, when he actually delivers the child to Warner. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Herzog, and then he goes back in and gets it. Gets Grogu. You burping? Uh, burping. But that's that whole episode was one of the best, dude. It was so fucking good. And she was she directed that one, and she directed a couple in the, in the first season, and then in the second season, dude. John, so I, I John think she Favreau and Dave Filoni were just sitting around, and they're like, you know what Star Wars needs right now? A fucking western. And I'm like, a serialized western. And 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 all of us are like, no, we fu- what? Oh. That sounds really fucking cool. And then they executed it to fucking perfection, And then they called up a bunch dude. of great directors like Deborah Cho. And, and actors. And Taika Waititi. Right? Because he directed the ep- the second to last episode of the first season. Even Brian Posen, one of the most awesomest underground comedians who's got tons of roles and other shit, was in The Mandalorian. And I know how cool that was. Yeah. So, uh, for that guy, I'm interested to see how they're going to expand that. I mean, m- prove me wrong, Disney. Prove me wrong, Deborah Chow and company, and no, Ewan oh. McGregor. Prove me wrong and say, like, Jake, you, you were totally wrong. Mm-hmm. You should be excited about this timeline between after the death of Padme to Tatooine because there's a lot of story we can tell in there, and there's more that we could tell about Obi Wan. And, uh, uh, you know, how are they going to do it? Because I, I don't even know where the timeline is. So maybe it isn't even after that. Right. I don't know. But right. I feel like the only logical step mm. would be to be after the end of episode three mm, yeah. to the beginning of episode four. But it's only like six episodes. So it's, I mean, how, what? You're not going to, it's only six I don't, episodes. You could bridge that gap. You could just do time jumps. What doesn't make sense to me is, uh, Al, uh, but uh, I, is uh, Hayden can Chris- I clarify my point? Yes. This is another thing that bothers yes. me about Obi-Wan. I am tired of watching lore between episode three and four of Star Wars. Uh, I there's there's so much other fucking lore in this universe that could be explored, and you can do it on Disney Plus. That's the perfect place to do it, and they're already doing it with Visions and, and the Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian. They've already started to do that, so that's why I'm like, um, I don't know. I'm a little I, reserved can about I, can it. Can I just say one thing that the sure. biggest mistake that the Star Wars universe made and Lucas himself. Go ahead. Finish your thought, man. Well, the way the prequels worked out, he kind of had to do it this way, I guess. Um, I don't think... I don't know. Uh, to to relegate... To basically make it canon that the, pre, that the prequel s- trilogy ends and then it has to be 18 years until the original trilogy because Luke and fucking Leia are born and that's how old they are. Yeah. That was the biggest mistake that they could have made. I don't know why they fucking did that. The Empire started only 18 years ago. Now, being in the real world, I understand that 18 years can be a long time. Yeah. But when I saw that original trilogy, the fucking Empire had been around for like 100 fucking years, okay? Yeah. Not fucking 18. But do you understand you don't understand my little bit of reservation about that because we've had so many stories in between. Yeah, so Hayden Christensen was returning as Darth Vader. Like what does that mean? No, but I, I just wanted to show you the, oh, yeah. the the image that was shared. The oh. the, the fight between Obi Wan and, and Darth Vader. But how Vader. is that gonna work out? You know, does he put on the suit? Is it's not his voice. I'm sur- sure if they have Darth Vader, they're gonna try and get James Earl Jones. Um Well Hayden Christensen has um Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna do that. But he is gonna be in the uh uh, Oksana show? Ahsoka. Ahsoka. Uh, he'll be in that show. I just want to see who they get to play Thrawn. So I don't know how they're going to do that. He's a bad motherfucker. And where's that, what, where is that taking place? Is that going to be the Clone War? Like right after the Clone Wars? Also, can we all talk about how much Dave Filoni would, like implemented so much of Clone Wars into the Mandalorian? Because he's like, I did this. This is my thing. Remember, I'm a huge part of this universe. Hey, look, man, it worked. It Everybody, worked. Everything worked. It was fucking awesome. Eating, it, yeah. It was awesome. I'm, I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just I saying think I think it's, it's funny. Yeah. Um, 
I, I think it's I think it's pretty great. Um, and I don't even, dude. I never watched the cartoons, but when I saw the Dark Saber, I popped. I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, because I knew about it from the from war. Yeah. So I'm in, again. I I'm a little reserved because it is. I, I, my assumption is going to have to be. I feel like that's the only logical thing you could do story wise is between three and four. But why? You're right. Why is he fighting Vader? I don't know. Well, I don't know how they're going to make My it work. thing is, okay, if you say Hayden Christensen is returning as Anakin Skywalker, like in a, as a Force ghost in Ahsoka, okay, I get that. But they have repeatedly said that Hayden Christensen appears in the Obi-Wan series as Darth Vader. They say Dar- they don't say Anakin. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? It you're gonna e- be, it gonna you're be either going to get a really fucking tall guy to wear the suit, because we won't fucking know it's him anyway. Yeah. Because exactly. he's wearing the mask. And you'll get. I mean, what the fuck are they talking about? I don't know what that means. That's what. That's what bugs me. Uh, and then another. Why am I so pissed about this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> another thing for uh, Star Wars and Lucasfilm is under the helmet, the legacy of Boba Fett. Uh, it will. You'll learn about the origins. Did you say Boba Fett. Fett. Whatever. Uh, learn about the origins <laughs> of the legacy <laughs> and you the legacy. have a Shush. Boba Fett helmet. Let me over finish. There. Let me finish. <laughs> Learn about the origins and legacy of the Star Wars legendary bounty hunter Boba Fett, and it'll be streaming on. Is uh, now available on Disney Plus, so you can watch it uh, now and watch it. So yeah. I do, I do like that. That's probably my bi- favorite thing about Disney Plus is that they do. Uh, they did it with all of the show, the Marvel shows, and they did it with the Mandalorian. Uh, I do like them doing these little documentaries about. Yeah. The behind the scenes stuff. So that's exciting. Gives me a bone. Now let's talk about Marvel because Marvel took up most of the announcements for Marvel's Disney just Plus. Jizzed all over the internet the other day. <laughs> yeah. So we already know about Hawkeye. <laughs> <They're> like, <"Ugh." laughs> Hawkeye's coming out next Wednesday and it's uh, going to be with, uh, of course, Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop. And it looks like they're going to be more focusing on the Matt Fraction run. Mm hmm. Of uh, Hawkeye, yeah, and it's gonna be that's the best run of Hawkeye, yeah. and that's the one you should focus on. And I love that we're this is gonna be another example of the what the Disney Plus shows were intended to do. Mm. The Disney Plus shows, and I stand by this, exist to make you more familiar with secondary characters. Mm. Mm-hmm. So when they're introduced in these bigger movies, it's a bigger moment. But but wait a second, aren't you always the one who's like, it's gonna get too big? It's you can't have both <laughs> Yes, you can. No. Because Hawkeye isn't going to be talking about a fucking multiverse. Hawkeye isn't going to be setting up another whole fucking phase of movies. Hawkeye's just saying, you don't think Haley Seinfeld is going to be Hawkeye now. You don't think there's going to be stuff <laughs> at the end of the series that you're like, whoa, what a reveal. No. Fuck you. Yeah, you know what the reveal's going to be? That she's in the fucking new Avengers. <laughs> because that's obviously what they're going to be setting up. Why else? You're so uh, funny. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck Marvel. I'm also again. I'm a, uh, I'm very excited to uh, see Haley Steinfeld's uh, interpretation because you get a you should give you a bone. No, pervert. She's a good actress. <laughs> Look on your face. Like how dare you shun me? Well, yeah, no, I mean she's we, she's not. You and I have watched the trailers. Age, I'm so very I'm very excited. Sorry, she's to see the film. I thought maybe you'd... or to see the show. Yeah, me too. Gonna be good. Can't wait. We're gonna. I'll. Fu- I don't know how I'm gonna watch it because of my internet issues, but I will find a Me way. Me fucking too. Because I. I want to be able to uh, talk about it on the show. We will. Uh. Also, smart to drop it like right before Thanksgiving, because it's a two episode release. So we'll see. And I'm wondering if it's gonna be half hour episodes, but I'm assuming they're gonna be 45 minute episodes. Mm. Excuse me. So that is, is that actually um a week. And two days from the day this podcast comes out. Yeah, so it's Wednesday. it's next Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow, or tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, Moon Knight. Uh, we finally showed off a very brief first look. It was like a minute. Uh, but it does definitely look like it's going to go for a darker, more violent tone, which I'm excited about because that's what Moon. They Knight basically is. showed Moon Knight beating the shit out of somebody for yeah. like a while. Uh, yeah. Which is interesting how they're going to put that on Disney Plus. I'm wondering if there's going to be like a per- so they're going to have uh, parental restrictions. On I'm it. willing to bet that they will have some sort of like they'll they'll put a disclaimer at the beginning. They'll have like the TV MA 
and they'll have a disclaimer at the beginning of the show, like this show is not intended for children. Yeah, you know, something. please, please be advised the dark undertones and violence of this show. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, let me just say one thing to all you who get all pissed off about that. I'm fine with that. It's not going to yeah. ru- the only way it would ru- ruin my enjoyment of the show is if it was like a little bug constantly in the corner of the are screen. Are you talking about the? Whole. Are you talking about when they remove things for like? No, I'm talking about um, just in viewer discretion. Like the, is the, Mupp- the Muppets. I was watching the Muppets show, and during those first two or three seasons, they sometimes you'll be watching an episode if you're streaming it and you're just binging it, and they'll come up and they'll say like this this episode. Uh, has uh, depictions of minorities and whatever and, and stuff that were at the time, you know, we we do not condone these, but it is important for us to leave them in for you to have a discussion with your child about so on and so forth. I thought that was really cool, actually. Yeah. And honestly, one episode I watched, I was like, oh, yeah, that's bad. Holy shit. And then the second one I saw with that disclaimer, I was having a real hard time figuring out what exactly was, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it, the the first one was very in your face. <laughs> like offensive you know what i mean yeah but i mean both were indirect it's the muppets they weren't out there going like you know i won't say anything <laughs> i like how you were gonna do it and you're like well that would be bad. well why would i yeah. why would i perpetuate a stereotype <laughs> to prove a point you yeah, know you know what he's talking about yeah uh, uh, but I'm, exci- I'm looks excited. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it looks really cool. I, but I just, I just wish they Oscar showed us. Oscar Isaac is a fucking badass. A little bit more because it's supposed yeah. to be coming out in 2022. My question is, uh, are they still filming right now? Is that why they only showed a little bit, like a clip of it? I think they're trying to keep the plot under wraps as much as possible because I think it's somehow going to be tied to Doctor Strange or something like no, that. No, I just think it's really. It's going to be so complex that even if you even if anything was revealed about it you'd be like that makes no sense to me. I'm um, here's You kind of you're going to have to watch this here's one because it's going to be very Here's the did thing. Did you ever watch Legion? No, I never did. You had to watch that show to understand it. You couldn't just read a plot synopsis no, cuz it make no sense. I've only to watched it. one episode of it. I, I that was It was like a great a show time. and if it's if Moonlight is like that man, it's going to be a fucking hey, crazy. Hey, hear ride. hear me out. Spoilers, everybody! If you've seen, if not seen Eternals, I'm gonna spoil a post-credit scene. And I apologize. Three, two, one. Spoilers. Here's my theory: Blade is going to be the Nick Fury of the Midnight Suns. He's gonna make the Midnight Suns with Black Knight, and he's gonna show up in Moon Knight, and he's gonna recruit Oscar Isaac's Moon Knight to be in the Midnight Suns. Wow! And I think they're gonna set up a whole. And that, in my mind, hear me out, Tyler. That I'm is. I'm done hearing you. <laughs> no, Midnight Suns. No, no, come on. Midnight Suns. My yeah, ruffle on my paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Midnight Suns is going to kick off the Marvel Knights banner of mm. R rated Marvel movies. Deadpool. Hire me, motherfuckers. Hire me. No, because you know what? De- Kevin Feige wrote that in his diary like seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, he wrote that in 2007. When he yeah, he was like. Um. <laughs> You know, just spitballing. But I think that would be really... Uh, no, I, I really think that Moon Knight, the Disney Plus show, is going to get the wheels in motion for a Midnight Suns. I really think we're that level. And I know, you would have said, Jake, 10 years ago, a Midnight Suns name, that's ridiculous. Well, explain to me why they're making a game and calling it Midnight Suns. They want that name in your consciousness so you know because they're going to make a fucking Midnight Suns movie, bitch. Mm. It's happening. Because they've already done Cosmic... Mm-hmm. They've already dabbled in magic with Strange. Mm-hmm. Only thing left is to go paranormal. Mm. Just saying. I'm actually excited. I think that'd be really cool. Moon Knight's gonna be fucking and, crazy. Hey, even if Moon Knight doesn't do that, yeah. I'll still I still think it's gonna be a fun. I'm show. still gonna watch it. Yeah. What? what? Uh, so yeah, She Hulk is still on track to be released in 2022. What's with the Grey's Anatomy logo? Yeah, why'd you change the logo, Marvel? It's a problem. The first logo was pretty dope. The first pers- first logo was awesome. Perfect. Didn't need to change. And if you are going to change it, change it to the John Byrne sensational She-Hulk wrap around. That was cool. Yeah. It was his series back in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. The comedy one. I uh, also saw a rumor that, that uh, and I don't take it with a grain of salt. Mm. Well, okay. Hold on. Before, <laughs> we, get like, the, before we get to what I well, want to say, did you see the leaks about uh, No Way Home? Mm, depending. I, there was a sure. leak that Daredevil is, in fact, in the movie. Well, okay, I saw some 
dumbass fan fucking made bullshit that had what's his name Charlie Cox and it pissed me off because I realized fan made. So it couldn't have been it was, something it wasn't that I saw. Fo- it wasn't footage. It was a screenshot. That's, okay. It was an image, and it's an image of him sitting at the table, like as if he's his legal counsel. Okay. So now there's another rumor that they're thinking that maybe Charlie Cox will show up in She Hulk, and work with uh, Jessica, or Jennifer. or or against her. Jennifer Walters. Yes, it is Jennifer. I, I don't know why I want to call her. What's wrong with you, man? Every time, but th- 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 that this it, is canon. <laughs> But I'm wondering. Jessica. I'm wondering. I'm also again. I'm actually very excited that it is a comedy, because uh, as Tyler put me in check. It's true. It's true. Uh, next show uh, that we 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 get told that is still coming in 2022. Kamala Khan is the star of Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's the story of the 16 year old Pakistani American from Jersey City that gets superpowers like the hero she's always looked up to. Summer 2022. Summer 2022. I, again, I'm a little frustrated that we don't have release dates on Moon Knight and She-Hulk, and I think and Miss Marvel. And my guess is they're still they're doing reshoots, or they're still doing some sort of filming. Because why else wouldn't you show them off? I think they're still trying to catch up to what happened. Maybe um, COVID get caused delays. Well, uh, look, let's. Everybody knows that uh, Black Widow was supposed to premiere before everything else. Um, way back in way back. May 1st of 2020. And then the Eternals. Um, and then uh, and then the Mar- the Disney series were going to... But Falcon and Winter Soldier was supposed to be the first one. Yeah, all the Disney so Plus shows were out of order. I think they're still kind of working on... There was a lot that had to be changed around. And I think Feige came down and he said, Look, we have to redo like basically a tenth of each of these things to make sure that they all fit because we had to do them out of order. They had a way of doing it, and then they're like, you know what, sorry, we got to start over. Not start over necessarily, but there are a couple of key sequences and key things that need to be rewritten and refilmed to fit the narrative. I'm sure that's what's going on. Yeah, maybe. Uh, another Hire sh- me, Feige! <laughs> another example of a little bit more of a surprise um, they announced Echo. And I, heard, I heard, thought I thought they'd already announced that. Well, she's they announced that she's in the Hawkeye show, right? But okay. this was announced that she is getting a spinoff out of that show. Did so you know Echo that in the comics coming. right now she is the Phoenix? Who is Echo? I don't even fucking know who. She's Echo a is. deaf. Uh, <laughs> she's a deaf assassin um, from I think oh, the Hand. Oh, do you think? Do you think then they're gonna start saying that Jeremy Renner is losing his hearing? Well, no. Jeremy Renner's always been already been shown in previews that he's ha- that he has um, hearing aids in Hawkeye already. Like that's gonna because be yeah, a the big part of the Fraction storyline is that he's going deaf, yeah, and losing his hearing. So that would make sense that they bring in Echo and they. And well, she's like supposed to be kind of a villain a little bit, yeah. But I think she's more of an antihero. Um, well, yeah, obviously because they're but giving her. But she's got a show. really cool design. She's got a a, a white. Hand print across her face, like tattooed across her face, really yeah. cool. But in the uh, in the comics, the Avengers had to fight the Phoenix to see who got the final host to be the final host, and uh, they had to fight amongst themselves. And Echo, who is a member of the Avengers, by the way, um, at this point in the comics, uh, actually won. Well, there you go. Ironheart, we knew about that, so no, I didn't did. know they had what. No, but yeah, we. Sh- I didn't know they had cast it already. Yeah, because she's uh, Ironheart is going to be introduced in Wakanda forever. Oh, okay, cool. But they did not announce that. Um, I don't remember them announcing uh, her having her own show. But at the very least, it I is do. confirmed. Uh, I uh, do, jerk. Uh, I I just yeah. I don't know. I I mean I don't know enough about Riri Williams to really be that invested in Ironheart. But it'll I'm be excited. it'll be good. I'm she's, sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, Agatha House of Harkness. Catherine Hahn will reprise her role as as long Agatha. as as long as it is a series exploring the, the witches. Ex- yes, Stay in exploring the, past. the surp- supernatural uh, beginnings of the Marvel universe, stuff like that. It's cool. Do not make it like modern day because I don't give a shit what she does unless she's got a real big role to play, like in the comics. Yeah, I don't care either. Or maybe she, like if you want to try and do a whole series about her trying to break out of the Wanda prison. Yeah, can I just say one thing, Catherine Hahn? Congratulations for singing a song that made you like millions. Because it was like she she even said she was like, I have no idea why, but fuck it, I made a shitload of money out of it. 
Yeah. The the Agatha, Agatha all along, along song. Yeah. And she got her own series. So hats off. She's she's been one of my favorite actresses for a while. Um she generally has done comedic roles, yeah. but she is a character actor in the finest sense of the word in that it's hard to now she's been a lot more places, but like she was the the um wife in Step Brothers. You yeah. know, she like it's hard well, to imagine. She did a lot of uh, Gary her Sanchez and Agatha Harkness, stuff right? With Adam McKay, right? Yeah. It's hard to imagine her in different roles like that because it's such a different character. And I just, I really like actors like that. She's also, yeah. uh, she also played Doc Ock in uh, Spider Verse, right? Plus, she's she's a she's a very attractive lady too. <laughs> uh, what? We got a little bit. We got a screenshot and a little bit more uh, news on uh, Sam Jackson and. Uh, ben Mendelsohn reprising their roles for Secret Wars coming to Disney Plus. Secret Invasion or Secret Invasion? God, what? They're not very secretive if I know about them. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> what do you think they're gonna do with Secret Invasion? Because I, I don't my know. Guess, I, I don't even know. How are they the gonna do that? Because the Skrulls are the good guys in the MCU, <sighs> I and I, I wonder how they're gonna flip that. I don't know. I'm just going to read and watch when they come out with stuff. You're not excited about Secret Invasion? Sure I am. I just don't know anything about it. I, I didn't read the comics and stuff, so I don't know. Wow. And... T- <laughs> wow. What a Marvel shill. Like, non-Marvel shill this guy is. Comes in here, tell me he's the biggest Marvel guy on the planet, and he doesn't know shit about no Secret Invasion? Ridiculous. I'm surprised you let me go. I thought you were going to cut me off at some point. No, I'm just reading ahead. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, that was pretty much all of the uh, live action MCU. uh, There's a lot of cool shit coming out. Yeah. I I think uh, Hawkeye is very exciting just because I really hope that they take a lot from the fraction. And it already looks like they are. Uh, the fraction run, even even Pizza Dog, you know, it looks like it's going to be a fun series. They, action, honestly, the most perfect you know. episode that this show could do mm. could be like they did in the comic, and do a whole episode from the perspective of Pizza Dog. They will. They have they to. They have to. They fucking it's have so to. It's so brilliant. Man. It's yeah. such a brilliant it issue. Won, it won a fucking like every award the comic books have. Can we? You know what? Let's take a little second here to appreciate Matt Fraction's run on Hawkeye because it was. What I love about comic books, it it took the medium and flipped it on its head, and uh, that is why when uh, we get to spoiler, we will we'll be talking about Matt Fraction again later. Um, but but like just like a, a great example of this is not only the pizza dog uh, issue, but I also love the issue where we meet Kate and Kate's talking to him, and she says that's cool, and in between the panels, it shows that in the time it took her to say that's cool. He had shot five arrows mm-hmm. into the target. Yeah. I was like, that's such a fucking cool idea and a cool way to show that. And then, yeah, you have a whole issue where you don't understand the dialogue for a bit, but then you he- see someone says, good boy, because it's through the perspective of Pizza Dog, mm-hmm. and then he smiles because he understands that. Yeah. And it's just so funny. And then uh, anytime they talk in a foreign language, Hawkeye will, I think Hawkeye does know Spanish or something like that. I can't remember. But he'll hear it and be like, Italian, Russian, <laughs> Maybe in parentheses. So if they really lean into that style, what do you have in your mouth? It's a bone. Oh, if you really have that <laughs> style. <it> <laughs> oh, so that was my dog, not me. That he was talking about. <laughs> uh, the Coopers invaded the man cave studio. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have in your mouth? A microphone? Um, <laughs> no, but it, th- I think if they really lean into that humor and that meta ness mm. of the book, I think it'll really help. They the show. should. If they're smart, they will. Yeah. So also, I, I I do think it's a cool way of letting Jerry, again we're at the and we talked about this and you were making fun of me about it being too big, but I do like that we're at the phase of we're starting to build legacy characters mm-hmm. and making the title be a legacy thing and mm-hmm. uh, and a p- plus I think it's a great upgrade I think Haley Seinfeld will be a g- good Hawkeye I, I think Hawkeye look whether you like it or not like both. Both uh, Hawkeye and Black Widow had had kind of gotten the short shrift in the MCU, whether you like it or not. They were never even up for uh, solo movies. If if anybody was crying out for a solo mo- solo movie, it was Black Widow. They finally yeah. do it, but after she's but dead, way too late. Right? Don't get me wrong; it was a great movie. I, I but yeah, I, it, I loved should, it. it should have came out where where it is in the timeline. Right. <laughs> 
But here's the thing. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, is um, it, it, it's 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 not just saying like, hey, you deserve this because you've been around. It's saying, hey, this is a great story to be told. And it's a great way to, you know, uh, have a changing of the guard. So I'm all for it, man. I like Jeremy Renner. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be fun and it's going to be action packed and it's going to be a blast. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I also, you know, you were the one who convinced me to be really excited about She Hulk. I mean, I've talked about that. Um, and yeah, and we'll, we'll see how they do I, it. I'm really, but I, yeah, I. Feige has never done, has yet to do me wrong. He's now he's kind of done me dirty, <laughs> but he hasn't done me wrong. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you, you still enjoy the changes. There are a couple times where you're like, I don't know if I got the best out of that deal, but you know he didn't screw you. Yeah. You know, you know he, he cares about this. Stuff. Right? He's like, you know um, what? I'll get you on the back end. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, know you didn't I, win this week. <laughs> I think this is a good chance with these Disney Plus shows. I think it's a great chance to expand the universe in a way that's unique that you maybe couldn't do mm. um, in a movie. And, yeah. I, and I hope that those shows start to embrace that because it's like I said, Falcon the Winter Soldier could have been a movie. Yeah. Loki almost could have just been a movie. Could've but, I, I mean, every week, I remember very distinctly, every week those shows were on, it was like, oh my God, the show's on, yeah. you know? So uh, It is a know, different level of excitement. WandaVision sure. was, I, I gotta be honest, when I look back on WandaVision and we had all these stupid fucking theories. I liked WandaVision a lot. I totally did too, but I think about how sure we all were yeah. that something that had to be Mephisto. huge was gonna be revealed and like nothing. It was this nothing. This is gonna bring in the X-Men. It was nothing. Hey, <laughs> this whole, this whole, uh, yeah, this whole Quicksilver thing. Yeah. yeah the, the whole week after he shows up at the end of that one episode, everybody's like, Oh my God! The X Men are coming. Yeah. Uh, and then, like two weeks later, we're like, "Fuck!" Yeah. That means the. Did that mean the? What? what? Uh, wait. What? What? what the, where's uh, Magneto? Uh. So, <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, one more live oh. action uh, thing to talk about actually is the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Yeah, I don't know what this is supposed to be. So it looks like James Gunn will be dire- wrote and is directing this. That's fine. It holiday fine. special Let's for Disney Plus. Is. Let's see what the fuck it is. I'm imagining it's going to be a riff on the Star Wars Christmas special, would be my guess. This is going to have a little fun with that. He also said the greatest character in the Marvel Universe will be introduced in the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. Who's going to be? The He never said the name. He just said the greatest character in the Marvel Universe. That's is going to be introduced in the holiday special? Yes, that's what, according to James Gunn. So you know it's going to be some dumb character that we don't care about. It's going to be like, good, good troll. So let's get into the animated side of I don't Marvel. think so. I'm willing to bet that it's going to be either Adam Warlock or Beta Ray Bill. But but again, Adam Warlock is getting introduced in the third Guardian. Who said? Me. We said it even <laughs> cast. I said it. <laughs> okay. I fucking I'm said it. Me, you fucking dick. God. All right, let's get into the animated section. I know that uh, I was surprised by this. The first... Marvel Studios produced X-Men project will be X-Men 97, a series featuring new stories set in the iconic 1990s animated series timeline. Now, can I talk about this real quick? Okay, so sure. I was still watching com- I was still reading comic books off. Are and you on. really going to bitch about the 90s? No. I'm okay. just going to tell you how <laughs> I'm fucking with it. I I I was still collecting comic books around that time and they actually came out with a comic book um uh, adaptation of the of the of the cartoon. And it was right. very faithful to the cartoon. And the first... It's pretty common. The first issue, just like the first episode, Morph dies. Right? Yeah. And I remember reading it and then seeing it. And I was like... Because one of these things is going to be dumbed down. It can't be this dark for a fucking cartoon. <laughs> so even though I didn't really watch much of it, because again, I hated the fucking theme song. And you don't I, like that one? No, and I didn't. Uh, and I didn't. Oh shit! I should pull that up on the soundboard. And I didn't like. <laughs> and I didn't like the animation style. So, and maybe it was because I was trying to maybe I was trying to kind of reinvent myself and not you know be so into comic books or whatever at the time. Um, but yeah, as a whole, um, well maybe you, not a big fan of the series. But also, I, you were out of the demo. As I say in as I said in my text last night, I am super super happy that you are happy about it yeah, yeah. Uh, well and that i'm not even i don't have a huge attachment to the 90s cartoon but i do think it's cool that you all right over there i had to fart but it didn't come out oh 
Well, I don't know how I'm going to follow that up in conversation, but here I go. Um, I, I don't have a huge attachment to the cartoon as much as I do, say, maybe the, the 90s Spider-Man cartoon or Batman in the Animated Series. But I do think it's cool that, that people that do have that attachment that are my age yeah. are getting a chance to make something like yeah, that. Yeah, because, I mean, I do know it's something like, let me just say this. It's definitely something I knew that people were clamoring for, clamoring for a hell of a lot more than an update on fucking Full House, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't, don't think know. people were like, "Man, I need to see Fuller House." Yeah, I don't think anybody was. And yeah. in fact, the ratings have proved that. <laughs> yeah. I will say this: um, the uh, Saved by the Bell reboot is actually pretty funny because <laughs> they lean into the absurdness of yeah. it. Uh, and I, and also, I'm wondering if they're gonna get the who they could get back of the original cast to do this because, I, I, or maybe they're just gonna. Keep it in that universe, but add different voices is probably what they're gonna do. I don't know, mm-hmm. but uh, I hope they get the original Wolverine. See, back. The, fu- the interesting thing was there was a couple things that were interesting about this series. One of them was that they adopted the blue and yellow um, X Men costumes for everybody, m- largely. Everybody had you know a variation, some variation of that on the X Men cartoon. The other thing that was interesting to me was Morph was a character that was from a long time ago. Uh, in the comic books, and didn't look like that in the comic books. But they brought him around basically just to kill him off, and it's revealed later on in the comic books that Morph was never a mutant at all. Hmm. Interesting. He was genetically modified. Yeah. But, I'm yeah, like I said, I think it, it's honestly more exciting uh, to see that, again, people that grew up with it being able to make it in there. And, and it's honestly, I think it's pretty dope that they're going to be like, okay, we're going to keep it in this timeline. And it is kind of cool. Also, the announcement for it was fucking perfect. Did you see the meme? No. Because you know about the Wolverine meme where he was looking at the picture. It says, we've missed, it's been a long time, we've missed you too. Yeah. And then the picture that he's looking at is the logo for X-Men 97. And I was like, nice. Um, nice! Nice! Meme. Meme. I don't have the... Phone. I, the I, fuck? I left my phone over what there. What the fuck? Uh, the next announcement, although it's not really an announcement, we kind of knew this was going to happen. Yeah. What if season two is happening? Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I joke. I look. I have my criticisms, and I think it was just me fucking around with the whole Guardians of the Multiverse thing. I I I am being legit though. I I do hope that season two is a little bit more serial, like the first few episodes were. Yeah, I. I I will say that I didn't quite like how they tied all the stories together, especially because, you know, they basically they basically had the conflict at the end of one episode and then resolved it by the end of the second of the next one. And one thing about sitcoms and 30 minutes shows, you know, that's one thing I don't like. I, I like stuff that is linear. Yeah. Yeah. And, if if you were going to put all those stories together at some point at the end of the season, I would have liked to see evidence of it earlier in the season. Yeah. So in my mind, I would like to see, I would actually like to see that too. Have a serialized, like, hey, that's what the comic books were. Exactly. I was going to say, right. the comic books are self-contained stories. Right. This is one issue dealing with this what if. Once this issue is done, we're not talking about it anymore. Yeah. We're going to resolve it in such a way that, like, well, this is what happened afterwards. Well, and, th- and that's another thing. Or what have you. And, and I like how DC does that. Yeah. Because DC, with their Elseworlds books, they're self-contained yes. books. They're graphic novels. Like, they're not issues... They're one, they're there was a story called The Nail that Alan Davis and Mark Farmer did, which was really cool, and they went ahead and did a sequel to it called Another Nail, and let me tell you, those don't always work out. This one did. It's it's really, really yeah. cool. It's uh, The basic uh, premise of the uh, Elseworlds story is that Clark Kent landed in an Amish um, community rather than you know who. Yeah. And it basically changes everything about the DC universe. Yeah. And again, what I was saying earlier and what I do like about Disney Plus having all these Marvel properties is a great example is this. Spider-Man Freshman Year. Mm-hmm. An animated series that follows Peter Parker's road to becoming Spider-Man within the MCU told in a style evocative of Spidey's early comic book roots. Now the little image I think I did see it looks it does look like more of like the Stan Lee Kirby style mm. cool and it's you mean Ditko or Kirby or, uh, Ditko because I mean. Ditko is more yeah and then Romita Senior yeah um 
and I seen a, like I, I think I saw a picture image of that. And if that's how it looks, that's interesting. And I'm wondering they ha- I don't think they said out loud that it was going to be Tom Holland, so I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. But I I do like this. I th- again, this is this is something that they can do something unique and do something different on Disney Plus that you cuz Spider-Man freshman year, that's not going to be a movie on the big screen. So yeah, sure, put it on Disney Plus mm-hmm. and it could be a fun little story. I mean, I'm interested to see um, how they're going to set that up, and I can't wait to watch Uncle Ben die again because I feel like they're going to do that. <laughs> Jesus. And, hey, props to Ho- uh, Spider-Man Homecoming not doing a Ben Uncle Ben death. Just saying he's dead. Or even an origin story, really. Not really. No, because like, you already saw You've seen two different generations of this. You know what it happens. You don't need to see his parents dying. Or you don't you need to bit. see Ben. He got bit. You got bit by a spider. Uncle Ben's dead. That's 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 the start. I think at this point in in the world, if you everybody knows that Uncle if Ben you're dies, a fucking five year old, you look at Spider Man and you go, "I'll bet you he was bitten by a radioactive it's, spider." It's just like Batman. I swear to God, if we see if Matt Reeves puts Batman's parents being shot in Crime Alley, I will walk out of that fucking movie. Get ready to walk out. You know he's going to fucking <laughs> You know do he's going to It's contractually it. <laughs> obligated that every fucking Batman project on the silver screen has to fuck. Dude, By I, the way, I can't hey, wait for the... Op- let's cast two amazing actors like Lauren Cohan and, and fucking... Jeffrey what's Dean Morgan. For a death scene. that, And then draw it out. Let's just draw it yeah. out. Make it like o- almost Matrix erotic style. house yeah. slow mo. Matrix is. style. Look, look at how the the hammer cocks, and then it just you guys breaks you guys the are, pearls. Hey, hey, preview of the Batman review. Well, his parents got shot in the first five minutes, so I had to walk out of the <laughs> fucking movie. <laughs> I stuck around, and it wasn't bad. It was a good movie. <laughs> We went together, and he was Jake my was ride. Sleeping, uh, in the car. I told, I gave him yeah, the keys. Yeah, he was I'm my like, ride. As <laughs> soon as that happened, I was like, "Here's the keys. Have a good time." <laughs> you know what you fucking said. You <laughs> you want some integrity on this fucking show? You want some it. integrity, motherfucker. <laughs> you ain't got no integrity. You ain't got no integrity. <laughs> um, two more projects left that were announced. Oh fuck uh, yeah! Uh, I am Groot. It's an original animated short. Explores Baby Groot's formative years before becoming one of the Guardians of the Galaxies. And James Gunn is an executive producer on it. No fucking way. It's, I think it'd be a cute little show. I like James Gunn. I want to hang out with him. <laughs> I want to party with you. And then lastly, this is one that's the most surprising, but also not. Uh, Marvel Zombies. So this will be an animated series reimagining the Marvel Universe as a new generation of he- heroes battle against an ever-expanding zombie scourge. Bleh. Honestly, the Zombies episode was probably my favorite of Well, what that's if. fine. That's fine. I've never been a big Marvel Zombies person. Why? Just boo. Zombies in general. Why don't you just have fun? Why don't you shut up? Why don't you kiss me? Anyway... <laughs> See, Why don't you make see, out? D- dude, it defused the situation. If somebody tries to fight you and you say kiss me, then they're like, wait, what? Because then they're like, wait. They're not thinking about fighting you anymore. They're All just- of a sudden, they're thinking about your beautiful full <laughs> lips. <laughs> and they're thinking, wait a minute. This is making me- I f- wonder if I need a mint. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> then it's going to make them feel some feelings that they're not <laughs> ready to- How fight. come I got a hard on? <laughs> All right, let's wrap up today's <laughs> show by talking about some other, I thought, interesting- No! <laughs> Disney Plus <laughs> announcements uh, that are non Marvel and Star Wars. Prey looks cool. As Prey, fuck. yes, yeah, the latest cool. entry in the Predator franchise is set in the world of the Coman- Comanche Comanche Comanche, Comanche. Comanche Nation three hundred years ago, and follows Naru as she fights to protect her tribe against the alien predator. I used to think it was Comanche as Summer well. Summer twenty twenty two. That looks really cool because um, I like the idea of basically taking the premise of the first one. And just changing the the setting. Well, and this is the thing. That's going to revitalize this the, it. This is the thing that frust me. It frustrates me about the Predator, Shane Black's movie, because it was cut mm-hmm. to shreds by the studio, and he had, he was trying to tell a unique vision, and he didn't really get to it. So it's nice to see that they're like. Also, Shane Black hired a known uh, sexual yeah, offender. Awkward. And didn't tell you know Olivia Munn. So you know what, dude? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well. Go ahead. Continue. I'm sorry. Why do you got to ruin everything? Because, dude, what the fuck, man? I don't care if he's your friend. Shane Black? I know. I know you don't care about my friend, Shane Black. Oh, you're talking about that guy. Sorry. Um, 
bitch, you fucking dumbass. You stupid bitch. You ain't got no integrity. <laughs> you ain't got no integrity. Um, uh, no, I, I was flying ever higher. I'm glad that Disney sees value in the Predator franchise. I guess. And it's trying to do some new things. <laughs> what? You don't like Predator anymore? It should have been one fucking movie. You didn't like one. You didn't like Predators. One. With an S. You didn't like Predator Two, and let me just—I you didn't like Predator Two, and Danny Glover fights the Predator. I saw that once, and I thought it was absurd. The only cool thing about that was the Easter egg that was the alien fucking head on the wall. Yeah, and then it paid off ten years later. Yeah, bullshit paid off. I heard that movie sucked a fat load of balls. It's it's a good it's a guilty pleasure Look, movie. Why did you give Ridley Scott the keys to the Alien Last, Empire uh, again? Announcement Sorry. here: No Exit is a suspense thriller that follows a young woman who is stranded by a blizzard and forced to find shelter at a highly rest area with a group of strangers. That's coming out in 2022. It's interesting because I always think that blizzards are uh, not utilized enough in horror movies because being stuck in a blizzard is scary as hell. That should be utilized more. Tyler. You know what time it is? Tim. Tyler's Long Tyler's Long Box. What's going on, Tyler? Man, what it you, is what are, fat up in here. <laughs> I'm going to let that hang. Tyler, what's on your long You box? ain't lying. Hey. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So as I was growing up, um, <laughs> the nineties the nineties were a pretty cool time because Comedy Central was uh, kind of new and they were coming out with all new stuff. Like every year, it seemed like they were coming out with something new that was like, "Oh, that's really cool! I got to follow that." Like South Park um, and uh, Drawn Together, and like a, a lot of great shows on Comedy Central that were, you know, kind of that had their birth in the nineties, um, kind of a renaissance of of, of comedy. And one show that was really prevalent a lot uh, was Reno 911. And I never watched it. I honestly, I hated the whole premise of cops from like the get go. I had friends who would literally sit there and watch cops like marathons yeah. and like get off on it. And I'm like, <laughs> we're smoking weed. Why do we want to watch cops? You know that what I mean? That would scare like, me because I'd feel like that I, I that fucking hate. I didn't hang out with these people that often, if you know what I mean. Let's just say that. <laughs> but. I knew that it was a joke. I'm not stupid. I didn't know, you know, I'm not yeah. saying that I thought it was real, but it just didn't interest me. The the premise didn't interest me. Um, recently on HBO Max, they had the entire fucking series on there as well as the, uh, was it one or two movies? One movie. Okay. But I started watching it, and uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, for the audience, you know this, but for you know the they audience- had a, They came back on Quibi? <clears throat> no. They had a return season, on but Quibi. for the for the uh, for the audience, if you're not aware, like there are so many people in this uh, that are in this show that pl- act in this show that you've seen in tons of other shit. Yeah, and they literally it, it, the the acting is top notch. The writing is fantastic. I mean, everything about the show. Did you know the guys that made this show also made Balls of Fury? No, I did not. But that makes sense to me. Uh, yeah. I. I honestly like I, I just there are laugh out loud moments that I don't that I don't get a lot. But this show I've watched like the first three or four seasons. All I gotta do is just put it on and I can binge for as long as I'm you know it's as, a funny as long it's as a funny time. show. It's, it's a great show. show. If you have time and you've never seen it, maybe because of the reasons that I never saw it before, um, you know, get off your high horse and get the stick out of your butt. <laughs> And turn on Reno nine one one because it's fucking funny. Is these people are top notch. Like the 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 everything that happens between them. Like especially the fake commercials. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is Lieutenant. <laughs> Be safe, y'all. Like they're just such bad. At, yeah. It's great. Check it out. Uh, for me, for Jake Unlimited. Wow. 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 They've turned it off. <laughs> There's always this part of the episode where they're like, well, they've got through all the topics. Well, now they're just, now they're just jerking each other in, off. Fucking around with the soundboard. <laughs> uh, t- uh, my Unlimited is actually a, f- a cheat because I physically own this. Yeah, you uh, Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky teamed up to make this book called Sex Criminals. I'm talking about Sex Criminals Volume 1. Mm. 
Uh, and I, I do want to actually do a proper review on this show, have you read it and do a proper review on it. Okay. But, uh, it's a good time. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, I lo- again, it goes back to Fraction just having complete control of his craft mm-hmm. and understanding how comic books work and just really great. Zadarsky does a great art and a uh, job with the art. And um, he's someone that I need to uh, read his Daredevil run because he's a great writer and he's also doing a Batman book. But uh, oh just yeah, Matt Fraction's run on Daredevil. Um, oh, I was talking about Zdarsky. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. Go ahead. But Fraction also did a run on Daredevil. I'm pretty sure. I think we might have done it together. Either way, uh, Sex Criminals is is such a cool book because it's such a unique premise. I mean, it's uh, the idea that there's this woman that when she has an orgasm, she goes. It slows time, and she's almost like in this other place. Mm. And then she meets her boyfriend, or she meets this guy. They start dating. They come at the same time, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And they both see each other in this space, and they're like, "Oh, I thought I was the only one." And then so then they start robbing banks, and then there's there's this whole thing. It, it's such a it's a book that where if you if I, if like just right now if I try to explain the premise to you, you probably think that sounds stupid. Why would that be any sounds good? Sounds hot. But then when you actually read the book, it's it's great. I mean, and there's some things that surprise you. Like there's like a POV shot. I don't remember which volume it is. I think it's in volume two. But there is a POV shot of a baby being born. And at first it's just the shot of a vagina. Wow. And then you start to see the head wow. come out of it. And I was like, oh, wow, we're just doing this whole, and there's a baby. <laughs> like, Wow. And, it, it, you know, it kind of reminds me of, a lot of it is like uh, Saga, where Saga will have those things where someone, uh, something says, it's th- they talk about death. Like, here's a dick and, all of a sudden. Well, or th- no, I was just saying, like, when they talk about death, and then there's five pages of darkness, and then it comes back, and you're like, oh, shit. You know, this you is know like, how many times and, and I, I think Sex Criminals yeah. kind of has those kind of ideas. I turn the page, and all of a sudden, oh, hey, there's, there's a, a dick. dick or there's, there's, a, there's a guy with a TV for a head jerking himself off. Yeah. Um, by the way, real quick. Anyway, Sex Criminals, yes. Volume One. Check it out. You mentioned Saga, and that's awesome because in the newest Taco Bell commercial, um, you know the one where the the one that's been on TV a lot is the guy and the girl at the beach party, and they're you know dancing and stuff in the in the yeah. surf, and then the bell rings, and she's like, "I need a taco." Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's another one, and uh, the there's a guy in cosplay. And he's in cosplay as a uh, fuck. What is his fucking name? The main character in Saga. Yeah, fuck. I can't remember his name right now. The dude with the antlers. Yeah, uh, as as him. And then he sees another person on the subway platform dressed like that. And I was like, oh, cool. What is this for? And then the fucking bell happens. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, Marco. I think. Yeah. That Marco I. Marco th- and Elena. I think that's the best way to. Uh, and episode 21 is... Coming together! Which reminds me, I, I do need to get caught up on Saga, because Saga's coming up in January. I'm not talking about... Or no, is it February? It's January, right? What? Saga comes back. I have no idea, but soon. January, I'm pretty sure. I know that they had gotten back together to start doing Which, it by again. the way, man, that's a long fucking hiatus, because I think the last volume was... 2019 and the fucking cliffhanger was insane and you're like you gotta wait three years I, i'm not telling you no i need to read them here's the well no i'm not going to tell you what the cliffhanger is obviously but no. here's the cool thing is that i only discovered i i had heard about this probably a year or two ago well about I wanna, saga. what i'm saying is i want to catch up before yeah. the next well i started reading it um i remember i bought you and i went to the thing and i finally bought like volume one and it was like 10 bucks for you know five yeah, issues that's how image and i gets bitched you. about that yeah because the next one was like 15 bucks yeah. at four issues. Ima- like, image always sells their volume ones at ten dollars and then yeah. ups it to 15 everyone after but 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 i got so into it that i devoured yeah. all it's, of it it's the same thing that, so i haven't had to wait that long yeah i i need to go and get the. I, i'm way behind the sex criminal because mm. i only have the first three volumes i need to catch up but i i two really good books Two books that two, are really two books that I think play with the medium a lot mm-hmm. and, and and find cool ways to tell you. And as stories. a Marvel whore, I can tell you, it feels good to cheat a little bit sometimes, guys. Yeah, maybe read a DC. You know what? We talked about this early on in the episode, uh, early on in the show, but we we should do both do uh, proper reviews, like a whole review episode for Sex Criminals and Saga. 
because I want to get real into the meat of those, and uh, we'll 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 do those down the pike. We don't know when we'll actually start doing those. We should get on those saga ones. We'll get more into that after the holidays. Well, I think holidays are going to be well, a little yeah, tight and I don't know exactly when uh, Saga is coming out. Yeah, me neither. I'll look. Um, so the last time so I Googled that can give it, us some time to build up. To they, I, I read an article, or I read an article where they said that they had gotten back together to start doing it again. But I, I it's early 2022. Yeah, hopefully, God. So I'm, I'm, th- I'm, I'm honestly thinking it's either January or February. It's and very early in the. By year. the way, if anybody, if any studio out there is thinking of adapting this because it's got more heart and more inventiveness than anything Star Wars <sighs> I don't did. Know if you'll ever be let me just that. say this. You better be fucking careful. <laughs> Any Hoosiers. Uh, <laughs> you can fuck it up real uh, let's, bad. Uh, thanks so much for listening to another episode. You can find the show on Spotify, <laughs> Apple, Apple Podcasts, Apple anywhere Pie. you need it. <laughs> I don't even know. Anywhere you need it. Apple Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. You want some of that pie? <laughs> Why I don't even know. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, <laughs> Where's Stan Lee to help us out of a jam here? And, and that's it. And that's it. That's, that's a <laughs> shitty Stan Lee. I don't know what I was thinking.